I'm Manisha Anantraman from the Justice Community and Leadership and the Global and Regional Studies Program. So in both the JCL and the JRS program, we direct our students' attention to the pressing social and environmental justice problems facing us both as a local as well as a global community. And in our classrooms, we really value students getting to know each other and engaging in critical humanizing dialogue about difficult questions that don't have easy answers. My biggest challenge was how can I create that environment with half my students on Zoom and half my students in person, where for many of them it is going to be their first time on a college campus or taking a college class. How can we do this in a manner where students are able to think critically about their own experiences, engage in honest, critical dialogue, but with an environment of compassion and fundamentally recognizing each other's humanity. So the first thing towards designing my high flex pedagogy was to acknowledge that the different groups of students were in very different situations uh, and places and to work with that and also to try and design activities that leverage the best of each of those mediums. I designed an activity where I uh, asked the students who were on Zoom to create posters that explored the human rights implications of the relationship between religion and nationalism or ethnicity and nationalism. And I encouraged them to go on the internet and look for examples, look for posters um, and, and to populate their posters with essentially things that they could access through the digital commons, uh, through our library resources. At the end of the class, when I bring the groups together, uh, the students who have had a chance to discuss in person and come up with these difficult questions prompt the students on Zoom with these difficult questions and the students on Zoom can then draw on their posters to try and answer that question using these real life examples that they have collected. So I think an activity like that really kind of sees that each medium comes with its own advantages as well as disadvantages and tries to work with that as opposed to kind of pretending that everybody is in the same place and the same pedagogical techniques will work for students on Zoom versus students in person. So another thing that's really important to keep in mind while teaching high flex is that as human beings, we're more attuned to paying attention to people who are occupying the same space as us. And therefore, I was really intentional about making sure that the students on Zoom, they were uh, very much a part of the learning community. So during each class session, I would ask one student to be the Zoom chat facilitator and I told them, um, you can interrupt me at any point. You get to say, hey, professor, and get my attention just so I can make sure that the students on Zoom feel empowered to have their voices heard, ask questions, as well as let me know if there were any technical glitches or they couldn't hear me very well. Further, I would just frequently turn to my camera and you know, say, hey, students, are y'all doing okay? Can you hear me? Um, you know, Just step up and ask any questions if you need to. And also just saying things like, I see you. I care about you. You are here with us just so that they also felt as empowered to speak up and like a member of the learning community that we were trying to create as much as, as my students who were there in person. The things that I've learned from this year of teaching high flex and hybrid that I will take into my pedagogy into the future uh, are two things. First, it is reaffirm my faith in the knowledge commons. While designing asynchronous lessons for my students, I was able to leverage the wonderful lectures and video resources on YouTube, as well as the St. Mary's Library to augment my students' learning and to bring a diversity of voices and experience into my classes, which is especially important in classes that have to do with social justice and environmental justice topics. Every week at the end of their Monday asynchronous lesson, students would complete a survey where they told me what they learned from the lesson, what went well for them, what they found challenging, and that served as a model of accountability and at the end of every Friday high flex session I would again administer a survey to my students both on zoom as well as in person to see how the high flex learning experience went for them and this gave me really a lot of data every week that I could then use to tweak what I was offering my students as their learning experiences and I think this process of kind of assessing and tweaking my courses as I go is something that I will definitely take into the future.